Hello guys, welcome to the Debug Arena. In this video, I am going to show you how can we create an API in Node.js. If you are a complete beginner and don't know anything about Node.js, then also you can watch this video and you will completely understand everything about API, what is an API, how to create an API and also we are going to handle all the type of request and errors that our API might face. So without any delay, let's get started. So the first thing, let's see what is an API. An API is the application programming interface. That is, it is a type of middleware that allows two application to talk to each other. Let me simplify it with the help of an example. Suppose this is the login form in our website and this is the database which store our users data. Now we want whenever user enter, whenever user enter his email and password and click on submit, there should be a something which verify that whether user exists exist or not in our database. So for that we need an API. So suppose this is an API. Now when user will enter email and password and click on submit, this website will send a request to an API to please go and check whether this user exists in database or not. Then API will send request to the database and to that database will send response back to an API that yes, user exists and that response will be sent and that response will be received by our website. So in this way, all this login authentication will happen behind the scene with the help of an API. Now. Let me show you how can you make an API. So this is the folder where I'm going to write code. I hope you already installed Node.js. Now first to run Node.js, uh, the first thing is to generate a package.json file. We can generate it by npm init. We just give everything details and click on enter. Yes. Now my package.json is generated, you can see here. Also to make an API, we will require to install some packages. I'm using Express.js, like you have to know that Node is an environment to run all this and Express is a framework of a node that, will, that we will use to make an API. And we are also going to install Nodemon so that we can run our server perfectly. Okay, everything is installed. Now, the next step is create a new folder named app.js. Inside that, first we will import our express require we will import our express let me give it name express okay and now let initialize it to the app express so here i have just uh, initialized express now let me just use listen to see whether my server has started or not here i am using callback function here i am consoling server started so what i am doing here i am for, i had first imported express and then initialize it to app then called a listen which is a function of express to know that whether your node server has started or not so now we will start our server and it will run on this port 5000 like this is the port number and if uh, our server will be successfully started then it will console server started before that we have to make changes here like inside test you have to like start you have, here you have to write node and the file which you have to start and just save it now open your file in cmd and run nodemon app you can see here we are getting that our server has started 
Now our first step is done. We had successfully installed Express and Nodemon and also started our server. Now let's make an API. For making an API, there are many methods like get, post, patch, delete. We will not see all of this method in this video. We are just going to make an basic API through which we can send request and, re and receive a response so that we can actually figure out how API works. In this video, I am going to use the post method to make an API. So let me tell you a little difference between get and post. In get, you can only receive a response from a server, but in post, you can send a request and then receive a response. So let me make an API. So this is my API app.post. Inside it, first I will give the name of my API that is post. And after that, make an async call, which will be my function. So this is the basic structure of an API. Now let's understand this thing that when user will enter his email and password and clicks on submit, then that data should be received by an API. And then how can we receive that? I had told you that when user click on submit, that website sends a request to my API. So we can get it to the request. So let me console request dot body we receive all that data entered by user in request dot body so let me save this let me save this and i am going to use postman to make the api calls so this is my postman first you have to select the post method because your method is a post then you have to enter the url Currently my server is running on localhost 5000 so I will write this and then post. So this is my uh, address like this is the name of the API. Now you have to set the headers. Okay. Content type we are going to, uh, to receive in JSON format that's why I am going to write this and now just in body select raw just send something like I am sending here data others. so this is my body uh, that is you can consider it like as email and password now when I send it you can see that cannot post okay I made some mistake let me say it again okay now you can see that uh, now you can see that in console I am getting undefined and I think this undefined is for request.body okay okay I am actually I am sending a data in the JSON format so we have to use app dot use express dot JSON like this now when I hit save and stop this and send this again Okay, once again, send again, and now you can see that I am receiving what I am sending through my body. So in this way, you can receive the data sended by the user to your API. Now let's work on this. Now you can see that I am receiving whatever data is sent to the body. Now let's work on this. So first, this structure that, like I am sending the data. This is known as destructuring. Now the response will be stored in this data. Now what I am doing here, I am just writing some condition. If data is equal equals to others, then now our server will send us the response. Till then, we are just consoling it, but now our server will send response. You can see here also. When I click on send now, this request never ends. It's, it keeps on loading, but we get the console value because we had never, uh, because we have never received a response. So now let's receive a response. Like if data is equal equals to others, this will say, it will send that response dot send. This is a function and it will just send status. 
is equals to OK. Now when I hit save, go here, cancel this request and then send it again. Okay, let me start the server again. Go here, send it again. And now you can see I'm getting status as OK. Now we are also getting response. This is the response from our server. So in this way, you can work with request and response. Now let's do other things. I hope you are getting the things very correctly. Like we had made an API. We had sent the data or a request to an API and also now we are receiving the API and now our API is finished. But let me show you the best practice to write an API so that you can handle any type of er error. So what does it mean? Now here I have given only that if data is others then, so, then my API will send me a response. What if this uh, what if this data is something else, then also he should respond to us. Not only this, sometime there might be a condition where that there is an issue in a connectivity. Then also like you, your API has been called, but your API has never reached to a function because of some variable mistake or some network issue. Then also, then also your API should be able to return something so that user can know what is the problem behind it? Now let's handle all this. The best practice to handle any error is to use try and catch block. Inside catch block, just write, just return the response and set status to error. And run this code in try block. Create an else and inside here, like response dot send and I can see here that status user not found now let's save this and go to your API send a request and you can see when I am sending others it is saying ok and when I am just changing the name and sending this you can see here that we are receiving status is equal to user not found and if suppose this data like I had changed the variable name now when now when the function will re, uh, reach to this line it will get it will give error and which error we don't know so it will directly go to the catch block and user can know that there isn't some error so now when I s click on send you can see here error and instead of error, you can just write something went wrong, try again. So in this way, you can handle all the types of error. So this is the best practice to make an API so that it can handle any type of error. Now you can see that I had used a try and catch. So if it receives any type of error, it will just response this. Now let's visualize this API in our scenario. Like we have a react application. We have a login form user enters email and password user click on button there. We will call a fetch API uh, There we will call a fetch function. You can see here. This is a basic fem fetch function in the URL. We will write our URL localhost 5000 post. Our method is post. Our headers are content type application that application JSON. The same header we have given in our postman inside body we will pass our data inside body we will pass our this so now this data will be received by our api you can see here, here it will process on this and it will send a response so whatever response like here currently it is uh, giving response as status something went wrong so you we will receive that response in here like in data, we will get that response. So how can we access that data dot status is equal equals to OK. So if data dot status is equal equals to OK, show alert, we can show alert like you had successfully logged in. So in this way, we can properly make our API, use our API to connect between our React and the database. And also we can make any number of API for anything and use the same API again and again. In the next video, I will explain you how can we make an API call using a fetch or exeos 
or how, how can we integrate a MongoDB in our Node.js application? All these things we will cover in our upcoming videos. That's it for this video. We will learn more about MongoDB, Node.js and React in our upcoming videos. And please let me know in comments whether you had learned to make an API or not. Thank you for watching the video and if you found this video helpful then please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.